Good day and welcome to another week of A Week at the Plot. It's Monday morning. It's actually quite grey out there, though still quite bright to my eyes and I didn't bring my hat stupidly. So I'm doing this in the shed and also there's somebody with a, you know, one of those angle grinder things out there. So, um, yeah, there's quite a lot of noise. And of course, it's Monday. So as I've said, there's refuse trucks and things like that. So I was going to do this segment outside, but actually I'm doing it in the shed. This talking bit, at least. It's about 20, 21 degrees at the moment, going to get to about 25, 26, apparently. And then next week, next Monday, which is our bank holiday weekend in the UK, the temperatures are quite a bit warmer again, apparently. They are forecast to be. But let's let's wait and see. We're due a little bit of rain later on today. Whether we get it or not, I don't know. But because that heat has um, fallen quite a lot, there is less watering to do. And of course, there's also less watering to do because the beans have gone over and various things are beginning to go over. So even though I'm watering things, I'm watering fewer things. Therefore, it's taking less time. But yeah, um, it's Monday morning and we're going to do a little bit of time travel now. I said in last week's A Week at the Plot that Sunday was going to be a day off for me. And in fact, it turned out to be quite a busy day down here. First of all, and people who've seen this on Planet Vegetaria will know, I arrived on Sunday morning to find that there had been more damage done by magpies to some of our tomatoes. So for those of you on YouTube, I'm going to slip in a bit here of that footage. It's Sunday morning. Thought I'd come down for some quiet time and look at this pecked, pecked, pecked. So I'm going to be picking the ones that are ripening and taking them home. I think I'll pick that entire bunch there and that bunch over there. I mean, what a challenging year for tomatoes. I love our wildlife, but I just don't want any more magpies to have any more of our tomatoes, even though I love them. Yep, <laughs> so that was rather disappointing. There are a few choice words used, I, I have to admit. Um, but now, you know, clearly the magpies, they they need moisture. We've got the wildlife ponds for them to go to, but maybe they like something a little bit sweeter. So what I have done is I picked all of the tomatoes that were turning to red and they are sitting here at the moment and will be going home with me today. I left them here yesterday because I had other things to take home. But then the mood really took me and I wanted to get on and do quite a few things in by the polytunnel. That area to the left of the polytunnel by the apple tree has been driving me mad for quite a while. What's also been driving me mad is the untidiness of the benches where we've got various plants in pots and cuttings. So, yeah, you know, that whole area from the bench through to the left of the polytunnel behind the apple tree has been a mess for far, far too long. So I decided to set to and sort it out. And sort it out, I did. Um, yeah, just an awful lot of tidy tidying and deciding what was going to go where. And then halfway through, I thought, yep, yeah, let's sort out all the pots. So I like to, I'm quite OCD with pots, even though it might not look it sometimes. I love square pots as well. They're my favorites. Um, I think they they neat, they neat fit neatly in a tray. They fit, fit snugly in a tray and I like that. My OCD likes that. So I sorted out all of our pots into size, into different types of pots. So there's one that I really like a, an awful lot. There were three piles of those, 
but all of the square ones I have kept any that were were round or most that were round and small I've put onto our sharing table and if they're not used we can use them next year for the Hamwell Carnival when people need to pot up plants so yeah I set to and then just cleared a lot, moved a lot around. This morning, my first job when I came down here was to strim. So I strim that area and I've raked up all of the um, strimmed material and spent grass. So I'm really quite pleased with the improvement in that area. Still quite a lot to do, but actually some of the things that I want to do are actually about deciding how that space is going to be used. Let's go and have a look and apologies if you hear that grindy grindy from that angle grinder. Our bench area by the squash bed and I've done an awful lot of tidying as hopefully you can see down the bottom here are marjoram cuttings and plants that had died back uh, they'll come back next year hopefully we've still got quite a lot of roses rose cuttings to take to our new house so i've tidied some of these and i've potted them each up into individual pots um so there's one per pot now because obviously when we did take the cuttings we put a cutting into each corner as you've seen us do before these are um, hedge roses which I took cuttings of a couple of years ago they have succumbed in the heat quite a lot but I'm hoping that they'll continue and they'll do okay thornless blackberry cuttings so this these three were from the um, organic hormone rooting powder this one was the one that we did without anything on and none of the honey cuttings survived. So that's interesting. A verbascum that was in this raspberry pot. I potted up as well. You can see here uh, lavender cuttings. These are the rose cuttings we took earlier in the year. They're doing fine. And we had this carnation which um, had flowered so I've cut it back and I've done some cuttings with the um, with what I cut back these at the back here are foxgloves which will start dying back now and come back next year but yeah an awful lot tidier and in fact with these when I cut these back um, because some of them like this one here were sort of like 18 inches tall I've done cuttings which are in the polytunnel. Fruit, I split this one and so this is a black currant, this is a black currant. They were in the same pot and were two shoots from the same pot. So I put a, a spade down the middle and split them. And um, so we got two plants out of one. Not the ideal time to do them, uh, but it was my time to do them so I got on with them so that's actually three black currants there this is a what's this winter king I think king yeah winter king which is a, an apple that I grafted when I was at a conference quite a few years ago and the graft took really well so I've repotted that and then a grape that we were given earlier in the year. So yeah, there's an awful lot of tidying and consolidation of things that were on various benches. We've still got things on the bench by the, the shed over there, but this is more of our sort of cuttings bench material. And then if we move over here, hopefully you can see a significant improvement. Um, still work to do. I need to cut that um, dead plant down. It's only dead for this year. It'll come back next year. But the bench of cuttings that was here, the crate that was here, if um, you remember I got a crate, was it last year or the year before? And I was using it as a bench. Um, but we've got this table now, so might as well use that table. And just an awful lot of tidying and, and cutting things back. 
and then sorting out of our pots and trays and lids so they're all neatly stacked and all of the pots that you saw in the video a, a while ago are in that crate there in their various sizes and I'm just putting that on top just to keep the sun off them and keep them dry over winter I do have another cover for this but I'm not sure whether I'll put that on I might actually tie this oh it feels pretty sturdy actually I might tie this up to that peg there just for the winter in case mind you I don't I mean if it's open like that things shouldn't blow over unless we get terrible terrible gales like that storm Eunice yeah um, stacked up all of our black pots those used to have potatoes in it and in fact this was an area where we grew potatoes it's got the black matting down and I need to decide fully what we're going to do with this area or maybe I don't maybe I just leave it as it is yeah and then we've got other supermarket crates which we use to transport plants to the Hamwell Carnival they've all been stacked there so they'll stay dry and this area here is going to be my next job but yeah oh and emptying these oh is that a little there's a grasshopper you see down there look what he jumped quite a few grasshoppers this year quite a few, lot of grass this year weeding of beds is going to be something that is going to take some of my time this week but let's forget about that for the time being because I'm just really pleased with the improvement in this area as I say not perfect by any means but you know what I'm really proud of what I achieved yesterday yeah it really does help with the mind and now yeah I can decide what we're going to do in this area if in fact we're going to do anything you know we're going to be leaving this plot in the next six months to a year so maybe it's time just to keep it tidy anyway I'm going to leave it there for today's segment and I will see you again very soon bye Good day, and as you've most probably gathered, it is wet. In fact, it's been raining for, I think, virtually six hours now. I think Vivi said that hers started around three o'clock, and even though we heard the, the rain and it, it woke us up in the night, I, I didn't look at what time it was, but Richard got up to make sure that the lower windows of our sash windows were shut so that no rain would come in and then we went back to sleep and I, I got up about 6 30 and could hear the rain and it's been raining since pretty constant actually and rather lovely two umbrellas down here today my red one for the sun as you can see on the the right of the picture and the black one to keep me dry as I came down here but yeah it's it's wet and that's fine absolutely fine and great <laughs> sounds as though I'm being ungrateful but I'm really grateful for this rain I'm not particularly grateful for the slugs that I've already seen and of course I'm sure there'll be many posts on social media today about slugs and snails out in force in fact, I posted something on Twitter earlier about that. 
but yeah I just thought I'd come down and water the polytunnel because of course the polytunnel is not going to get watered and I want to do some harvesting and I'm also going to pick some of those black crim that we can just see about a foot above the, the ground in that tomato bed there because I don't want them pecked by magpies though I think magpies will be keeping well clear in this rain they'll have found somewhere uh, dry to, to roost however I can see on the aerials of the houses over there that there's two aerials that have got wood pigeons on so yeah and of course birds are flying yeah I'm pleased for this rain as well for our Portuguese cabbage and our turnip seedlings which as you know are in the grow house and open to the elements because they will be loving fresh water from the sky they really will and in fact I noticed the other day yesterday the day before that the parsley that we had sown all the lettuce that we had sown a few days ago one of them has germinated but again very bad labeling Paul why didn't I label those I don't know which is which though I'm sure we'll find out because of course the parsley seedlings will come up and their true leaves will be very different from the leaves of lettuce anyway I'm just going to sit here now make a few notes and listen to the patter of the rain on the roof and go and do some watering in a minute in the polytunnel see you very soon bye good day it's Saturday morning Rich and I had a lovely day yesterday at Vivi uh, you will see some something that we helped her with you'll see in a, a video I think uh, that she is going to be putting out in the next week or so so when we were at her garden we helped her with something and we just had a nice time just sitting there chilling for a few hours and yeah a lovely a lovely day and we still need to do Sunday chat which we will be doing later on but before that Richard's doing some things in the garden. His lawn is growing so well, by the way, it really is. And I've come down here just to do some watering and to potter about a little bit for an hour. And I thought I would bring you up to date on the highly scientific experiment that we started conducting a couple of weeks ago when we were just getting male flowers on our Waltham butternut squash no female flowers at all I gave them a good talking to and then within a matter of days one butternut had started forming on one of the plants so I thought yeah then I saw another one had potentially two on that same plant let me show you now what talking to plants does these are our wolf and butternuts and as I said there were plenty of flowers but they were all male and how do you know they're male because they have no growth on them here there's no squash forming and yeah I gave these all a really good talking to I said come on put up your female flowers there's plenty of pollinators we certainly need some butternut squash in this cost of living crisis to eat over the autumn and into the the spring and you know what virtually everyone has listened now so this one trails out here and look there's one forming can you see there how that is a sort of mini butternut can i get any sun on it i'm not sure but as long as this flower here here gets pollinated that one should do okay then coming over here this next plant has got one forming now the one over here is the one that set to 
immediately we were talking or after we were talking or I gave them a talking to so there's another one there in here another one in here uh, I'm not sure there's one on this one this one's no nothing on this one I don't think uh, no not yet not yet I need to give that one another talking to here another one forming and we come over here you can see here there's two forming and on that one over there nothing forming yet no let's just have a look in here yeah so of our how many have we got one two three four five six seven of our eight plants we have in here six have taken note oh no seven this oh not sure if you can see in here there's another one so that's coming off this one so seven seven of the plants have listened to us there's just one that hasn't so far so I think I might do a bit of naming and shaming of that butternut off camera I don't like doing it but needs must yeah and then let's just go up here I noticed that the courgette that has done well for us this year we had two one has done not a great deal I was gonna say not a lot but not a great deal this one has done not a great deal though you can see it's still forming flowers it's still forming fruits but they sort of don't seem to come to anything this is a courgette a courgette cucumber that I'm leaving to ripen to save seeds from but in here this is what I wanted to try and show you can you see in there all those ants and in there you see all those ants they're pollinating they're taking what they need from the flower and they're pollinating so you know when we talk about pollinators we often talk about bees but not other creatures and there's many sort of moss flies ants you know a whole whole host this one here you can see is rotting at the end I'm going to cut that off because that's rotting and I don't want any energy to go into that these this one here you can see it's got a growth behind it this one here you can see hasn't got a growth behind it this is a male flower this is a female flower so I want the ants to go from here over to this one and you know what generally they do can you see them going up and down so yeah so I'm hoping that if I take this one off because it's rotting at the tip this one here will do rather well fingers crossed and in here this is the oh, spiky leaves Oregon homestead sweet meat I've cut the vine off a couple beyond this fruit growing because I don't want the energy to go beyond here but actually this really isn't developing that much this is the third year I think of trying homestead Oregon homestead sweet meats and no they haven't come to fruition so I don't think I'll try them again but yeah oh apart from Heathrow kicking out planes every now and again it's a rather glorious day so yes I'm just going to carry on pottering and I'll be back to you tomorrow not sure doing what but yeah I'll be back to you tomorrow you can see how I positioned 
the umbrella on top of the shed so that I had shade rather than light in my eyes. So yeah, there we are. So I think we can mark that highly scientific experiment of talking to plants firmly to increase productivity and growth as a success. And I'm gonna mark that down as such in my book. Now I'm going to carry on doing some watering and some weeding and just a little bit of tidying. And then I'm going to go home to do a little bit of recording for what's coming up tomorrow morning on YouTube. See you very soon. Bye. Good day. This is the remains of the nettle and comfrey that we put to soak and break down in water for a nettle and comfrey feed. We did this, what was it, two or three months ago? And I could have strained it out earlier, but no, I've just done it today. Other things to do. And all of what was in this bucket has gone into some containers so we'll have a look at those in a minute but all the remnants of this which is still slightly dripping away here and straining through that strainer this is all going to go into a compost heap because it will be a great activator not that i think we need a lot of activation in our compost heaps because they're pretty much alive but yeah it will be a good activator whatever and Everything has been decanted and this is what we've ended up with. So the container here is five litres. You can see it's not quite full. And then these are each 1.5 litres. So that's five, eight, 10.5 litres of comfrey and nettle feed or nettle and comfrey feed, depending upon which way you put it round. And we will be diluting these generally sort of like 1 to 20 or 1 to 10 if I'm going to do a good watering afterwards once I put the feed down. So yeah, one litre of this to nine litres of water minimum. I mean, it obviously depends upon your strength of, of nettles as well, but these are all sort of rough guides, not... Um, you know, not, nothing more than that. It was a pretty smelly job, just um, decanting all of that and straining it through. But hey-ho, it's all good stuff. And I thought we'd also have a look at the perennial weed bin. Because I looked at that a few weeks ago and that was looking good as well. So this has had perennial weeds in it. So that's mainly sort of all dried out material on top. It's had some cardboard. There are a few bits of plastic you can see in there, which I'll take out. But you can see the, um, the worms have had a grand time. I mean, look at them wriggling there. I mean, it is a form of vermicomposting. Look at that. <gasps> Isn't that excellent? And most of this up here is dead. So, you know, it's not going to affect anything. But this is going to be great compost to put onto beds to overwinter. 
as I say, um, I will have to look. I will have to just check through for plastic. It's popping the shed while that plane goes over. That was a pretty smelly job to do, I have to say. And fortunately, I don't think I got any of it splashed onto me. The gloves will be washed today and then dried and brought back down here. But yeah, it's a it's a stinky job. But, you know, that that um, compost tea is really, really good for plants. And because it's nettles and comfrey, it's um, it's an all rounder, if you like, a general purpose fertilizer. So, yeah, please, I've got that done. And so pleased about the compost in that perennial weed bin. I can't remember how long it's been going. I think this might actually be the third year. But, you know, I don't know how big those um, those big containers are, those big wheelie bins that uh, many of us put our rubbish into each week, our household rubbish and in, in our case, our green waste at our homes. Um, but, you know, that that's plenty. And sure enough, it's a completely sealed container. So there will be quite a lot of moisture at the bottom of that. But you can just see the quality of the compost at the top. And basically what I've done over the the years is I've put perennial weeds in. I've then put um, cardboard in, perennial weeds on top. So every time I put perennial weeds in, or most times I put perennial weeds in, Certainly when I put a large amount in, I then put a layer of cardboard on top because even though it's got a lid, that blocks out more light. And I think the heat this year has really helped. And you can see how that compost bin is alive with worms, which of course is fantastic. So as I say, a, a form of vermicomposting. So I am so pleased about that. Um, I've also had another nice job to do this morning. Yeah, those are both nice jobs. Are they nice jobs? Yeah, they're stinky, but lovely results. So, yeah, nice jobs. It's the Hanwell Sunflower Growing Competition judging today. So I've been around the streets already for those um, who are taking part, going to their front gardens and measuring the sunflowers, both the height and the heads. And there have been some really, really pretty um, sunflowers out there. Though actually the one who has won, and they don't know it yet, but they're just walking along their plot at the moment. Um, their head was just majestic a couple of weeks ago. But today is judging day. And I'm really pleased to say that the, the seed head, even though it's dried, it's still the largest sunflower head that there is around uh, in our area as part of the competition may not be the prettiest but it certainly was very pretty a couple of weeks ago and today is still the largest so there we are yes i'm not saying anything too loudly because they're over there anyway i'm going to leave it there for this week's a week at the plot and i'll be back with you next week which of course in the uk is a bank holiday weekend is it a holiday weekend in america i think it is as well Maybe I'm wrong. But yes, the, the last Monday of August is our summer bank holiday. And uh, I will be down here doing things. But I think Richard and I are also hoping to get out for a walk very, very first thing in the morning. We like to get out really early and then get back before everyone else starts going out. Anyway, there we are. I'm going to leave it there. I'll see you very soon for a further a week at the plot. Bye.